Hi, my name is Mary Beth with MakeYourOwnMolds.com and MarvelousMolds.com. And in this video, we're going to show you how to make a fondant bow knot using our jeweled mold. Some of the tools that you're going to need for this project are the jeweled mold, some uh, wire cutters, um, needle nose pliers with a nice cone, tapering cone at the end, 20 gauge floral wire, um, some bonnet or gum paste in the color of your choice, some gum paste in gray, some toilet tissue or facial tissue, a rolling pin, um, a nice surface to work on. This is a flexible chopping mat. You can also use a uh, silicone mat. We've got an X-Acto knife for cutting, a piece of styrofoam, some gum glue and a craft brush. A pounce. This is a lady's um, white stocking that has cornstarch poured into it and you tie a knot at the top. Another craft brush that's dry for super pearl dust. And we have templates, one for your bow tails and one for the bow loops. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to use some of my um, gray fondant. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cornstarch the mold. You just take your pounce and put some cornstarch in your mold. That's a lot of cornstarch, so what I like to do is I just like to tap the mold and um, get the excess out. The only thing that you really need is a nice thin layer of cornstarch in your mold. Okay, so I like to take small pieces of my fondant and place it gently into place it into the mold. And just keep adding pieces until the fondant is flush with the top. Okay, then I'm going to take my floral wire and I'm going to cut about three or four inch length. And I'm going to take the end of the wire, grab it with my needle nose pliers and then just twist down until I get about a candy cane shape. And then I'm going to grab that candy cane shape and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. So we've got this strange hook. Um, next thing I'm going to do is going to dip it in my gum glue and then press the hook down into the fondant and then give it a twist and that's going to lock that wire into the fondant and then I just like to use my thumbs or fingers and just squish the fondant right around the wire. The next thing you want to do is remove the fondant from your mold and these molds have a nice um, lip edge that you can grab onto. So you grab onto that and push up from the bottom and that releases your fondant from the mold and you can just pop it out and you have a nice little brooch. That's really cute. So that's going to need to dry for about 24 hours. We're going to put that in my styrofoam and set it aside. The next thing that we're going to do is um, roll out our fondant. You can either use fondant or gum paste in any color that you choose. We're going to make our bow loops right now. If you're going to, if you're going to use fondant, you're going to want to add some tylose just to make the fondant stiffer and to dry harder and dry faster. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll out my fondant fairly thin, about an eighteenth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch. I'm just going to roll it so that my boat loop template fits on it nice. Okay, let's check and see if it's big enough for the template. Looks like it needs to be a little bit longer. Now this template that I have is about two and a half inches by six inches long and you can make your bow loops as big or as small as you want. I just happen to like this size. Okay, it looks like it fits just nice. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and I'm going to go around the edge of the template and just cut the fondant. You can also use a um, a gum paste tool that's a cutting wheel. It's got a little wheel on the end and you can just go along the edge of your template. All right, 
right, so I'm just going to take away the excess fondant. The next thing we're going to see. And the fondant is that fairly medium thickness. Take a little bit of gum glue on your brush and just brush along one edge of your loop. Fold your loop in half, put the ends together and just slightly pinch it. Going to add some more gum glue to the top edge and again to the bottom. And then we're going to do sort of an accordion fold. We're going to start in the middle and fold up and then along one edge up and then down and repeat the other side up and then down. Give it a pinch and then pinch it again this way and that makes a nice shape for your bow loop. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our toilet tissue or facial tissue, whichever you happen to use, and I'm just going to roll it into a cylinder. We're going to use this to support the loop while it's drying. Okay, so I'm going to put that, place that into the bow loop so that it gives it the nice shape while it's drying. Set that aside and make my second loop. We're just going to roll out some more fondant again and cut our second bow loop roll of the toilet tissue in. And gently place it inside. Okay, so that's our second bow loop. I'm going to get my first one back over here and put them together. And I just want to kind of um, make sure that <coughs> that these that my center is going to fit nicely into my, my bow loop. And to me that looks like it's a little too far apart. So I'm going to go ahead and use my X-Acto knife and cut some of this extra out of here so that they can fit together a little nicer. And I'm going to test and see. I think that looks good like that. So I'm going to gently press down with my um, center to impress the edges of the center into the bow so that when everything's nice and dry and you press it all in together on your cake, you're not going to break any of the pieces. Okay, so that's just putting a nice imprint of the jeweled brooch right in there. And you can kind of see there's some scallop edges impressed in there. So I know that this will fit when everything's nice and dry. So let that set out to dry for about 24 hours. And once your centers have dried for 24 hours, you can add, um, add some sparkle and luster to them. And this is gonna make it look like um, a jeweled brooch. One of the things I like to use is super pearl dust and a nice dry craft brush. If you happen to have an airbrush machine, um, just get some uh, silver sheen airbrush color. And um, you can just airbrush the color right onto the, the dried brooch. But we don't have one of those today, so we're going to cut ahead and just draw, dry brush on the Super Pearl to give it that uh, metallic feel. You can also add some um, disco dust to give it, that, give it some sparkle. Adding some sparkle to make it look like a jewel. Next, we're going to um, make our tails for our bow. So we're going to roll out some more of the purple fondant that matches the bow and cut some tails.
Now I would um, wait until you're ready to put the bow on the cake before you roll out your tail so that they stay um, workable. Okay, so there's the one. Looks like I need to just roll it a little bit longer. Go ahead and cut with your exacto knife again. Remove the excess fondant. And then I like to give my tails a little bit of a tapered end. Okay. So we're just gonna set this, set this aside for a minute and we're gonna roll out our second, um, second tail. And you can cut another angle like the like that. And our second tail. Now putting it all together is the fun part. Okay, so here's our cake. And our bow loops have dried overnight. I'm going to go ahead and take out my tissue paper. Out of that one. Tissue paper out of that one. I'm going to go ahead and set these. You can put these to, on your cake with either buttercream icing or royal icing. And take your... So figure out where your center is going to be. And then I like to take my bow loops <coughs> and place them on the cake. Stylize them however you like. And then take your brooch center and just push it into the cake between the two loops. And if you need to, you can use your needle nose pliers to help you push it into the cake so you don't break the top of that. This is a styrofoam dummy, so it goes in a little bit not quite as smoothly as a fresh cake. Okay, so there you have it. Our brooch bowl with our bow loops on your cake.